Hello, all beautiful souls. This is Anthony again tonight, and I'm here to talk about my commitment to healing. And, you know, what I wanted to do is also give a disclaimer on here because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist. I am, however, a man who has had many years as a nurse, a prostate cancer survivor for almost six years, and some valuable information for all men that are going through this issue. I've also worked with the LGBT and non-LGBT men with prostate cancer because I have found um, that there's not enough people out there that are doing the work from the um, community level as far as peer support. And I'm here in Las Vegas, and there's not a lot of it here. Um, there are some groups, but I'd rather do my own meeting online than to, do, um, to go somewhere. That's just how it is. Um, have the same body as any other man. And, you know, we all choose to express our love in different, in different ways and different. And I feel that in this lifetime, this is the way I was born. This is how I was chosen to be, not by myself, but by a high, higher spirit form that could do it much better than me. So my motivation in doing this work is not to change or influence any way in any specific way. My motivation here is to provide information and a few resources to all men who have this need for assistance on their journey of healing. So, and blessings to all the men and women who are going through cancer. And because this is a, a challenge, it's a life-changing event and experience, and we all go through it differently. And so... And it's the last uh, podcast in this series because of the depression and difficult days. And, I, and I'm, the reason I'm doing that is because this will lead into my next series of podcasts, which will be on prostate cancer and going through that, and many different forms of educational resources um, with that. So if you are a prostate cancer survivor, um, and you would like to have to be in a podcast or to be interviewed, I'm really happy to do that with you. I'm looking for some people to do that with, actually, here in Las Vegas, either online or anywhere in the country um, online on Zoom. So, um, you know, I... When I first found out I had the, the cancer, it was a very difficult thing to deal with, as you would assume, because nobody really likes to talk about the C word. We just don't. And that's what we call it. But by researching other groups all over the country, I found that there were only a few support groups for the LGBT community. Now, there may be a lot in California and New York and middle of the country somewhere in Chicago, but there was not a lot here in the area where I live in Nevada. And um, so this is why I felt like I needed to create it. But this is also part of the reason that I did the actual, um, went through all of this cancer. And I think it actually put me more in a state of depression than I ever was because I was going through some very deep things at the time. I happened to be at a perfect time for finding it out because at that time that I did find out, I started looking for um, clinical trials going on. And clinical trials in regards to being an LGBT person in the community, looking for a meeting that would support prostate cancer and, um, and gay men going through that, and maybe some doctors and information. And what I came upon was um, a, um, a study 
that was being done from the Uni University of Minnesota by Dr. Rosser, Simon Rosser. And he was, he did the first uh, study, first treatment study of gay and bisexual men with prostate cancer. So, of course, I called, they interviewed me, and within a few weeks, I was accepted into that program, which was fantastic because I think it started in January, and I was having my surgery in December. So I was about to get a really good education in this, in um, LGBT, and some different ways that they were going about to support um, men going through this. So, and I, there is a lot of information, which I probably will put the link in here um, in the description for Simon Rosser and his study. Um, and um, yeah, let's see. Okay. So he did the study. And what we found out from the studies is that many ur urologists do not know the difference on how to treat a gay man, a bi man, and they treat everyone like they are heterosexual. But they don't ever ask. A lot of times they don't even ask what your sexual preference is. They just act like, um, you know, are you, is your wife coming with you or to this, um, you know, to your exam or this discussion? And, you know, so it's important to get these things cleared up before you show up at a doctor's office with your husband or partner and you've knocked this uh, doctor who was not ready for it off of his feet because um, he may not really support your lifestyle or he may not know how to deal with your specific issues. And, and the whole reason I'm doing this is because I want more support from doctors. Um, like what they're doing in Chicago at Northwest uh, Northwestern Hospital. They have a whole program for um, gay and bi men. Um, so, and you know, when you do find out the options, whether you're, you know, a gay man, a partner with a man or a woman, no matter what, the only thing that matters is love to each other because it's, it doesn't really matter. The commitment between a man or a woman is the same, whether you get married in a church, whether you get married in a court. We are all sexual beings and love transcends all of it in the end. And remember, as we move through each phase of your process, um, why? Because in the beginning, that's all you will think about is losing your sexual ability and it will have to come back to you will have to come back to that in some way it just may look a whole lot it will come back to you in some way but it may just look a whole lot different than what you expected it might be so because you know being a man and going through this does create issues with all the nerves in the area and, um, you know, and this sets you up for, talk about depression. It puts you into a whirl. So, because I, I read some of the things that I, that I see online and also hear some of the groups that I go to, men that are newly diagnosed and, you know, talking about it, they, they are freaked out coming to a meeting because they don't know what to think. They don't have the, you know, the information and which is why I spent five years in that group moderating it because for me it was like a teaching I learned a lot plus I wanted to learn as much as I can because I wanted to figure out what I needed to do and it did help me I wish I would have actually gone to it earlier on because it would have helped me even make maybe some better decisions in the surgery department but according to the way my uh, cancer was found it was in two both lobes and it, it was it couldn't just be dealt with in one lobe and be have cryotherapy on it but um, you know because what they want to do there's there's just a lot of things to go through 
And, you know, like, what I want to say is that it's so important to get as much information as you can and spend your time doing the research. I know a lot of people um, freak out about that, but I spent about four months or more doing that before I actually made a decision. And, you know, when you're going through this, nothing else is on your mind, really. And, you know, you you keep thinking about what this, what that. And because in the morning, I would start out thinking, I'm going to get this treatment or that surgery or this treatment. By the afternoon, it was different. By the evening, it was different. By the time I went to bed, it was different. So that's how many different phases of transition and change you'll go through when you're dealing with something like this. And, but that's why I wanted to find out about it and, and work with it even more. And, and what I have to say is because of that, because of going through the prostate cancer, and that is what actually led me to where I'm at today as far as getting treatment for my depression and walking through it and getting TMS treatment and going again for another set of treatments. That is what got me to hear all of those things. So making the right decision while I was going through the, the prostate cancer, making the right decisions after the surgery. Make, and so you're going to be constantly faced with more decisions. So it's kind of an ongoing thing. And that's why the biggest thing I've learned, and which is why I talk about it a lot, is that the most important thing you can do is be in the moment be in the moment right where you're at and breathe you know i was reading something again from dr amen's book today about you know they tell you to breathe why did they tell you to breathe because it gets more oxygen in your body the more oxygen you have the more we go into what's called diaphragmatic breathing the more we go into that we move into a more relaxed state and come out of fight or flight because that's what's also happening. When we're in trauma, we're feeling in fight or flight, like we're fighting for our life. And in some ways we are, but these decisions need to be made over time. But they can still um, evoke the same um, reaction, like it is life and death. At some point it will be, but not at that moment. So... The biggest thing that I've learned is taking the deep breaths. Breathe in three or four. Breathe out seven or eight. And, and do that for five or six times when you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling like you don't know what decision to make next. Because that's the biggest um, the biggest thing I can give you because that is what I'm left with. Because I can go into the trauma, the treadmill to nowhere, the rumination spin and keep going. And, and what does that get me? It doesn't get me very far. It just gets me entangled and frustrated. And it doesn't take me far on my path. What takes me on my path is looking at each step of what I want to do. And so today, even when I'm doing things with these podcasts or um, the Heal, Lead, Teach channel that we're doing with the food or other videos that we're doing, I'm looking at them differently. I'm breaking them up differently into different things because I'm able to now look at it in, in more um, sections because everything does not work all at once. It just, and it never does, never has, never will. We take things in a section at a time, right? Life comes to us a day at a time. Life comes to us a moment at a time. So that's all we can do is endure this moment, endure whatever you're going through, because guess what? It'll be over pretty soon. Tomorrow, will you remember it? May maybe not. Maybe you won't remember it. I hope you won't. But what I want people to come away with here is, yes, I'm not a doctor. 
I'm not a therapist, but I have gone through many, many years of therapy, different types of counseling, and have been through a lot of different treatments. And I know what works now, many, many years later, which they didn't have TMS years ago. I wish they would have. But when, by the time I found it, the transcranial magnetic therapy is when I needed it the most, and it was there. So remember that, in, and these treatments for prostate cancer for men are changing monthly, actually. You know, from when I started out six years ago, I would say there's about six to eight different new procedures that they do as far as um, diagnosing it, as far as how they want to treat it, um, as far as what's getting approved through insurance. Because a lot of things weren't approved six years ago that are now approved, like cryotherapy for one. Um, I'm not sure if the ablation therapy is, which is where they use heat. I th it's called HIFU. I'm not sure if that got approved yet. But in certain cases, if you get a letter from a doctor, you may be able to get it supported through um, Medicare or your insurance if there's enough um, influence through, from your doctor, from your radiologist, or for whatever's going on for your specific treatment. So don't give up on thinking that, you know, just because your insurance says you can't have this treatment, that you can't. Because um, some of the people in the group also go to Mayo Clinic, which is a real um, journey to get to as far as from where they live to how they have to get there. But they're getting the kind of treatment they want. And, and, it's, being, and it's actually being paid for in some way that it wasn't being paid for before, a few years back. So know that there are a lot of different options available. And for I'm sure this is also true in as far as um, breast cancer and other cancers because the development is constantly moving, constantly changing. The community is constantly evolving and changing. So, you know, that's why I still try to keep up with stuff um, that's going on. But um, from one of my um, from one of my books, and it's called it's it's a it's a book from uh, it's called Conquer. C O N Q U E R, the journey informed. It is a great. I'm going to just show you the, the picture here, and what's in there um, is. I get this every so many months, and there's like a whole lot of um, articles on cancer and what's going on. And what I found is one from this woman, um, how to talk to a friend with cancer, and I'm going to leave you with this. Um, please don't ask, you know, please don't ask about my prognosis, if I'm terminal, what stage I'm in. Have you, gotten the, have you gotten a second or third opinion? Have you tried this treatment? Have you tried that treatment? I feel hollow and visible as a cancer, as cancer wins your attention. Don't drain my precious energy telling me why, what I should do next. It's not your body, not your journey, not your life. This is between me and my chosen tribe and God. Stop giving me platitudes like, stay positive, take up needlepoint, visit another country, read this book, meditate, pray more, change your diet, travel to where my aunt had cancer went. Let me initiate if I want to talk about cancer, I will let you, I will tell you when I need your embrace. I will let you know. I will share my fury of my anger with you. I will, a I, how I ache with shooting pain, where the cancer lives in me. Ask me what I need 
Look into my eyes. Come alongside of me with love and compassion. I cannot make you feel better. Your discomfort is about your own fear of mortality. Striving, I cannot make you feel better. Your discomfort is about your own fear of mortality. Striving for constant happiness is an illusion. We're all in the same distance from the ditch. If there is a high, there will be a low. Where there is a mountain, there will be a valley. I may not share it, but I look closely when you're, when you're not around. I watch my body decline as side effects ravage my limbs, my limitations tarnish my dreams. I struggle to love the battle, scarred parts of me, to love the life I still have left amongst the losses. I can integrate all these parts of me because they are the truth of me, and I am whole. And this was written by this um, woman who's a life co coach. Her name is Michelle. And um, I thought, when I read this, I thought, this is so good that I needed to read it and let people know that, you know, when you're going through this stuff, you get all of those questions and a whole lot more. So decide what it is for you that you need. Let people know what you need from them. And because you don't have to, you don't have to people please when you feel like crap. It, it doesn't work really. And um, you need to be able to be honest and tell people you feel like crap, you have a bad day, this is what's going on. And if you start having an emotional breakdown and cry, then good. Then you had a nervous breakthrough. And you're allowing yourself to feel those, those sadnesses and tears. So um, that's what I have to say. And I have the other thing I have to say is that I, I send blessings of healing to all of my, um, all the men, all the women out there with some type and form of cancer. And I hope that they find the, the perfect treatment for them that works for them. And, you know, even though it's been six years for me, I still have to go to the doctor every three months to get checked. Because, you know, when you have something called positive margins, they don't know if they got it all or this or that. They make you go through radiation. They make you go through all these other treatments. But you're never really sure so you want to live each day like it's your last day, but you also want to plan that you might live another 10 years. Or like one guy in the group said, his doctor told him, prostate cancer is not going to kill you. Prostate cancer is not going to kill you. That may be true. It may be something else, a side effect to something or a, a different disease. But but they're telling, they're now telling men, prostate cancer won't kill you. So then that's what made me decide, you know what? I started to realize I might actually live another 10 or 15, 20 years. Who knows? I have time to still do some of the things that I want in my life. And that's why we are doing this channel. That's why we are making food. That's why you're seeing all these different things come out. Because there are things that I'm doing that I never thought I'd be doing. I never even thought I'd be alive today. <laughs> and here I am. So, so this is so you're looking at a miracle, a walking miracle, a talking miracle, and I hope that a miracle comes true for all of you. And um, I'm inviting any of you who are listening, if you want to um, join me in the the next thing that I am going to be doing, which is about the journey to journaling. And I'm going to start doing a live um, uh, video on a, a live uh, a live feed on that, probably once a week, because I feel like it's important, and more people tend to watch a live than a video. And also to be able to interact with people, because I'd like to hear what people have to say about 
different things. And because by journaling, what I've learned is that a lot of things start reoccurring over years of doing it, and even shorter. But especially when you're going through cancer or something, you need to write these things down so that you can remember them. Because sometimes you won't remember everything that you go through in a day. So that's why. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Um, blessings on all of you. And um, from Heal, Lead, Teach and Anthony, this is my last podcast for the depression and difficult days. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you haven't and um, like us and um, I'll see you in the next podcast. Thanks for watching.